Welcome to Ignite Your Fire. So, let me share a little bit about me. I'm Shanika McClarty, and on the surface, most people know that I'm a licensed clinical professional counselor, a national certified counselor, I'm a great mom to three little girls, a lover of Jesus Christ, and a wife to an awesomely handsome and great man. What people do not know about me is there was a time in my marriage where I was ready to give up, throw in the towel and walk away. I was secretly wishing for sex not to feel like a chore. I was secretly fearing that I wouldn't be satisfied again in my marriage. And I was trying to figure out what happened to our passion and I didn't like the mundane routine we'd fallen into because it felt like we were just roommates. I knew if we continued to keep living our lives the same way, I would become bitter and angry and our marriage would fail. I didn't want to disrupt my, disrupt my kid's life, but I didn't want to fall off the cliff of divorce either. Now, my life and my marriage is different because I decided not to pretend everything was okay. I started digging deep into myself and into my husband. Digging makes people feel uncomfortable, but I have preferred digging over unhappiness. Our communication went from talking to digging, and our intimacy went from personal pleasure to digging. I started digging into every aspect of my marriage. The process wasn't always easy, but it was damn sure worth it. So, I want to help you and your spouse take off the mask, expose yourselves, and dig deep too. I want to help you spark a new flame in your marriage that you've never had before. No more trying to get that spark back. Instead, I want you to create a better one. You don't have to be silently unhappy anymore. Your intimacy doesn't have to continue to fade and you don't have to secretly wish for anything anymore. You can have a deeper meaning in your marriage, more closeness and openness, excitement, and a new spark, new passion. So you're going to learn how to expose yourself and identify what's suffocating your marriage, as well as your triggers. And then you'll learn how to start the fire to breathe new life into your marriage. But most importantly, you'll learn about the list that could possibly turn your marriage around, possibly turn it around. There was an article written by Becky Zerb called The List That Saved My Marriage. And in it, she details the time she packed her bags to leave her husband. She and her infant son went to her parents' home and there she told her mother of her plan to divorce her husband, Bill. Becky's mother took a sheet of paper she drew a line down the middle, she handed it to her, and she instructed Becky to do two things. On the left side, she was to write all the things her husband did that made him impossible to live with. And on the right side of the paper, she was to write how she responded to each of those things and what she did. So after Becky was done, her mother cut the paper down the middle and she threw away the left side. So the side of the left side of the paper that Becky had written all these things about Bill, her mom threw it away. She handed Becky the right side and told her to reflect and pray about what she had written on that paper. I think Becky's mother was trying to teach her that she is responsible for her actions, not her husband's reactions. The good news is Becky and Bill did not divorce and their marriage transformed not because of Bill changing, but because Becky changed her actions and her reactions. I had a similar problem like Becky. I had a list of things I wanted my husband to change and improve on. In fact, I spent a whole year writing and complaining about it in my journal. I became so angry with him because I felt he wasn't trying or he didn't understand what I wanted. I'd even convinced myself that he didn't care. I knew my husband was a great man, I knew he was a great father, and I knew he was a great provider, but I wanted more. One phrase that I repeatedly wrote in my journal was, quote, 
I love his character and his spirit. I fell in love with him because I felt like I mattered and I felt I was like, like I was enough, end quote. It all changed the moment I felt like I did not matter and I did not feel enough. Back then, my solution was to quit trying and to let him figure it out. But my way didn't work because I could feel myself disconnecting from him and an empty space began to form. And after a year of me slowly drifting away, I decided to give my marriage and my husband all of me, despite what he did or didn't do. I have a question for you. Are you ready to face the mirror? If so, the first thing you must do is identify what the problem is. Why did your flame go out? Why did you allow that fire to burn out? Who or what put your fire out? You see, I nitpicked on the small things. He didn't do this right and he didn't do it that way. I began to see my nitpicking as he didn't care. Our flame went out because I got tired of talking and trying, so I quit. I did just enough to keep him happy while I was unhappy. I want you to do what Becky's mother instructed her to do. Take a sheet of paper, draw a line down the middle, and on the left side, write down all the problems in your marriage. Write the issues you have with your spouse. And on the right side, I want you to write how you respond to each problem and what you do. By all means, don't hold anything back. This is your opportunity to get it all out. Remember, there is nothing more important than this list, nothing. So now that you've completed this list, I want you to honestly answer these questions. What do you secretly wish was true about your marriage? What do you secretly fear will happen in your marriage? What are you afraid of? And what do you ignore because it triggers fear in you? What do you fear might fail in your life if your situation continues or if it gets worse? As a matter of fact, what's the worst case scenario if you don't get help now? If you don't fix it, what's the worst case scenario? My worst case scenario would have been to silently be unhappy with the man that I love. My second worst case scenario would be to fall out of love with him. My third worst case scenario would be to cheat. And my last worst case scenario that I feared the most was divorce. I didn't want any of those, so I started digging. I wanted the spark back in my marriage. I wanted to feel the fire burning. I wanted the passion too. In my journal, I wrote, if, I'll keep trying. If I kiss him, have sex with him, laugh with him and talk to him, he will be happy. If I'm a good wife and meet his needs, he will be happy. But I'm walking in the shadows of depression because he hurt me. But guess what? I knew that I had to start the fire. I had to be a fire starter. And see, there are three things you need to make fire. You need fuel, oxygen, and heat. The fuel, which is the spark, is inside of you. It's your love, your feelings, your emotions. Love requires sensitivity, and your spouse needs the best of you. Remember, I said I decided to give my husband and my marriage the best of me and all of me. I decided what to do with my pain. I made that decision. My marriage was on the altar, and I had to decide if I would allow my behaviors to sabotage it or would I just hold it sacred. If you're in a marriage and you're hurt, you have to make a decision before you move forward. You have to decide what you will do with your pain. Holding on to your anger, 
bitterness, depression, sadness, or rage will suffocate your marriage and destroy it. You will be existing in a dead marriage because of pain you are too afraid to let go of because you want to punish your spouse or because you expect your spouse to fix it. No one, including your spouse, has the power to fix you and make you happy. That's what I call conditional love. It's like you're saying, if you do X, Y, and Z, then I will feel happy or satisfied. It's not even love. It's not real. That's ridiculous. I know you don't want your happiness to ever be controlled by someone else's actions. So what are you going to do with your pain? What are you going to do with your rage? What are you going to do with your insecurities? What are you going to do with your boredom? What are you going to do with your, your um, depression? You can fuel your marriage with pain or with love. Which one is it going to be? If you choose love, just know that it will grow the more you talk about it, think about it, and express it. Now, the oxygen is the source that sustains the fire. We cannot breathe without oxygen. It is a vital resource that sustains us. Oxygen is always present. We don't have to search for it. It's readily available to us. Your actions are the oxygen that will sustain the fire in your marriage. So couples who get bored are the couples who allow themselves to become complacent. I think where some spouses make a mistake is believing that they are doing all the work in the marriage. Because I convinced myself that I was putting in more effort than my husband was, and I was in my feelings about it. Then I had the bright idea to start taking inventory of what he wasn't doing to please me and critiquing how he did things. I was making it very difficult for this man to love me. Believe it or not, there are times when your actions speak louder than your words. So what are your actions saying to your spouse? What are they saying to your spouse? So I have a quote for you from Ashley McElwain. And she says, when your spouse asks you to do something and you respond without love or a willing heart, you destroy the blessing of that action. Requests made by your spouse are invitations to love. There's invitations to love. Requests made by your spouse are invitations to love them. And when we accept the invitation gladly, we bless them with love. But on the contrary, when we do go unwillingly, we steal the blessing and rob them of love. Are you robbing your spouse of love? Take a look at your list and the things you do or how you respond to your spouse. What behaviors do you need to eliminate ASAP? What behaviors are you afraid to let go of because you think it gives you power and control? Would you feel weak or helpless if you changed some of those behaviors? Or would you feel free and empowered? Just remember this. The behavior that is most difficult for you to change is the area you need the most growth. So what you do in your marriage will help sustain it, like oxygen. The fire's heat has two components, temperature and intensity. It provides warmth and it soothes. And your persistence is the heat. I'll say it again. Your persistence is the heat. The more you pursue to please your spouse, the hotter the marriage will be. So write this down. I was made to create value in my marriage. That's right. You were made to create value to add value in your marriage. As a fire starter, your main purpose is to create value. Just focus on that. So, how do you ignite? First you focus. Focus on creating value in the marriage. That's your primary focus. 
There are so many things that we give our attention to that distracts us from what's most important, which is our marriage. We focus on money, bills, meeting deadlines at work, Facebook, TV, friends, extracurricular activities, and so many other meaningless things that does not even add value to the marriage. Just imagine how much stronger and happier your marriage could be if only you focus on the person you said I do to. I want you to focus on three things. How you love your spouse, how you respect your spouse, and how you protect your spouse. Never mind what your spouse does, just focus on creating value through how you show them your love. Create value in the marriage by how you show respect. Respecting their decisions and opinions, respecting their dreams, respecting and appreciating what they bring to the table, and then focus on how to cover and protect your spouse. Initiate. Don't sit back and wait for your spouse to make the first move. Initiate the conversation. Initiate the kiss. Initiate the affection. Lead. We are in our marriage to lead our spouses to a new and deeper realm to trust and love. You cannot lead or empower your spouse if you're sitting back with your arms crossed and your head turned away. That type of posture simply says you're not interested. You're so much better than that. The spirit of love needs you to initiate, make the first move. Apologize first, serve first, speak up first, show affection first, love first. You may have been initiating things with the wrong type of posture. You may have been initiating the argument. Stop it and initiate the resolution. You may have been closing the door to intimacy. Stop it and open yourself up. You may have been initiating the spirit of dishonesty and mistrust. Stop it and initiate loyalty and truth. Everywhere you have been initiating negatively, I want you to turn it into a positive initiation. I challenge you. I challenge you to lead in your marriage. Reciprocate. When your spouse shows a gesture of love and kindness, take notice and reciprocate. Don't take it for granted. This moment you are in right now is all you have. The past has been written, good or bad, and the past cannot be changed. So when you are shown a gesture of love and kindness, it can be multiplied simply by you reciprocating. Stop shutting your spouse down because you are all in your feelings about something that happened a few days ago, let alone a few years ago. Let it go. When the gesture of love shows up, receive it and give it back. Your spouse can only take so much. The more you keep throwing daggers, the less he or she will show love. A wounded dog that keeps showing up to get kicked is either desperate for attention or stupid. And I don't think your spouse is either. So if you want this marriage to work, stop wounding your, your spouse and reciprocate acts of love and kindness. Excite. Seek to stir your spouse up inside. Bring intrigue and excitement into your marriage with your attitude and the things you do. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Your spouse is not your entertainer. It's not your spouse's job to make you feel good. No amount of excitement or pleasing will fill an empty void inside of you. If you have a void, you need to seek professional help to work through it for healing and restoration. But what you should be intentional about is seeking to bring excitement into your marriage. And that begins with your attitude. Never look for anything in return. Just show up to stir up the marriage, excite the marriage. It's like when you're cooking and you stir the food, you're making sure all of the spices are evenly distributed, right? 
You want to evenly distribute the spices. Same thing. I want you to make sure you drop excitement in how you say hello. Switch up how you do things. Even how you eat. If you're eating the same meals week after week, month after month, change it up. A boring marriage will lead someone to start peeking over the fence. Change up what you wear to bed. Add spontaneity and excitement will follow. Stop waiting for your spouse to do something different. You can make the first move. Lead. The more time you spend with me, you'll learn that I love quotes. I love the wisdom from other people because it helps me to become a better person. And one of my favorite quotes by Deepak Chopra states, romance is recess and relationship is school. Romance is recess, relationship is school. Well, dating is recess, but marriage is school, <laughs> okay? As a matter of fact, it's like grad school. Yes, it's serious. So couples want to have fun, but they don't want to do the hard work to get there. It's a balance between grit and grace. You have to want the fire, crave the fire, and you have to start the fire. You have to be the fire starter. So think about it. Do you think you can be a fire starter in your marriage? Do you think you can become a fire starter in your marriage? So what's next? I wanna help you create the fire, intensify the flames and keep it burning. I don't know about you, but I want a hot marriage. I don't want any, I don't want my passion to fade. I don't want to settle. I don't want to feel like roommates. I don't want to be bored. I love the feeling of being in love and I don't want anything to fade away. I also know a lot of you are scratching the surface and you could go deeper in your marriage. That's where the gold is. It's below the earth's surface. And we have to dig deep to get to the gold of our marriage. I'm opening up my calendar to speak with you and your spouse. This is where you can tell me where you are in the marriage and where you want to be. And during the, your discovery session, I will help you unearth and expose the challenges that have grown roots in your marriage, as well as creating a blueprint to help you and your spouse. And if you're ready to go deeper, just go ahead and schedule your phone discovery session with me. It's free. You can go to yourmarriagerocks.com slash schedule and schedule your free couple session. I'm looking forward to working with you and your spouse. And I also want to thank you for setting aside the time to invest in your marriage. I appreciate you and I wish you all the best. God bless.